I'm Kylie Strum. I play professional soccer for the Orlando Pride. And how do we know each other? Oh, we go way back <laughs> to good old Union Endicott High School. I would, I think it's not a stretch to say we were not friends. Yeah, I mean, I didn't want to say it, but... <laughs> we were friendly. Yeah, we were definitely friendly. I probably smiled at you in the hallway. You probably smiled back. I don't know that we ever had a conversation. <laughs> we ran in different circles. Yes, that's certainly yeah, true. Or what you're... did you know about me back then? Oh, <laughs> I mean, you were always destined for greatness. Oh, okay, come on. <laughs> Although, I, Yeah, I, you were always really into music. I guess it's easy to say in retrospect. Right. Isn't that the extent of it, though, right? You're like, oh, yeah, you're like yeah. the music kid. Yeah. I'm like, you played soccer. Yeah, I was the soccer kid, you were the music kid. Yeah, and like, and here you we seem are. to be really successful yeah. at that in high school. Yeah. I seem to be very successful at, at music in high school. Yeah. So I guess... Pretty it's cool. Fun. Pretty cool. <laughs> But it is truly the extent of my knowledge about you. Yes. Um, until very recently where we ended up doing an escape room together. Yeah. But like, you don't really talk during that about things. It's very hectic. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, okay, I actually don't know anything about you. Yeah. And I don't think you know anything no. about me. I don't. <laughs> so as much as we go way back, and that's absolutely true, and I understand your upbringing so deeply, because I'm sure it's so similar to mine, that's where it ends. Yeah, that's, yeah. So, take me through it. You are in upstate New York. You're having success with the soccer team, which I remember being, like, very good as a team. Is that accurate? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we, we had a good run in, in high school, for sure. Are you the only one that continued on? No, there was a, actually a good group of us okay. um, who played like D1, D2 soccer. So that's yeah, crazy. Pretty rare, I think, for a, a high school. So. Yeah, to have multiple yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was fun. Played high school, went to college at Boston University, played there. But like, even that, how's that happen? Like, did they scout you? Did you decide to go? Yeah, so um, I played, so like you play high school soccer and then you also play like club soccer. Mm -hmm. So I was playing my club soccer in Syracuse, which as you know, is a bit far away from Binghamton. Sure. So I was traveling back and in forth. In high school you were In doing high both. school, yeah. So I was traveling back and forth to there to like get the best training with mm -hmm. the best coaches, that sort of thing. Sure. Um, so yeah, I was recruited from there. Um, to play at Boston University and I really wanted to go to Boston University um, so I was like you know hoping to get a scholarship because yeah. I love Boston big fan yeah and I did and from there what happens um, so from there like had a decent college career I would say yeah. like as a team and individually sure and um, then it kind of gets interesting. It's already interesting, <laughs> by the way. Was the goal to play professionally? Yeah, okay, definitely. So you were already like, but how does that usually happen? So the typical path yeah. is, so you go to college and then you get drafted. Okay. Um, I didn't get drafted. And that's so. like a scouting situation as well? Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah, so there's always scouts like looking at you mm -hmm. in college. Then there's a draft, maybe like 40 players or so mm -hmm. um, get drafted out of like probably 400 who wow. yeah so I wasn't one of those fortunate 40 people okay. so I was like okay let's see how this goes uh -huh. um, so I went to like tryouts so then you can go to go to like open tryouts okay. and stuff more opportunities to be scouted yeah. now everybody's together yeah okay like nothing was really working out I like played for like a reserve team mm -hmm. Nothing crazy. And where was that? Uh, that was in Boston. In Boston. So it made sense. Okay. And then I went over to Germany to try my chances over there because it wasn't working out in the U.S. You just went. I just, it was so bad. I ended up getting deported, actually. What? <laughs> yeah. Like, and not purposely. What do you mean not purposely? I know not purposely. I, I don't know if you, like, <laughs> know, but, like, I'm, like, a rule follower. Like, I, I don't break the rules. I'm a good girl. <laughs> I was over there for six months. Yeah. I don't speak any German. Sure. I would just trusted this man who was helping me get my visa. I was there in the beginning. He handed me this sheet of paper. It was all in German. Of course, I didn't translate it because why would I do that? I just trusted him. And he's like, okay, all you need to do is you need to get your visa before you go back to America. Okay. I'm like, okay, cool. Great. Awesome. So me and there was two boys from the men's team go to get our visa and like German people. I don't know if you've ever met them, but they are like, they're very nice and personable. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. You know exactly what I'm talking about. 
So like this woman was not having it. Like you could tell, I didn't understand what she was saying, but you could tell she was not happy. She was not happy. Anyways. This uh, reminds me of when I got my Russian visa. Oh, <laughs> Russian visa. <laughs> they, um, What'd you need that for? Uh, I was performing in Russia. And so, yeah, they, they um, if you don't have exactly what you're supposed to have, they, they don't really help you out. Yeah, I, they're just I can like, imagine. You come back when you have it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't know what I need. And yeah. they're like, we'll figure it out. Yeah, good luck. Yeah. But no, okay. you're not coming. No. But you got the visa eventually. I did. And uh, didn't get deported? I didn't. Okay. You have a different story, it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> so, she's not happy with us. No. Where we've all overextended. All three of you? Yeah, so technically, without a visa, you can only stay for three months. Right. So we were so there like for traveler. six months. That's more. Yeah, that's double. And so they were like, you know what, you need to leave immediately. So which is like not terrible. But anyways, I had a trip planned with my friend. We were going to go to Scotland and then France. And then I was going to come back, get all my stuff. Okay. And go back to America. So once I left the country, I wasn't allowed back in for six months. Right. But I needed to get my stuff. Uh -huh. So I did my trip with my friend, snuck back in on the train. And then when I went to leave again, from Germany, obviously, I was like red flagged and they were like, you weren't, you weren't supposed to be here. I had like a big stamp in my passport saying like, leave to enter for six months. Like, yeah. But luckily, the team I was playing for, I was playing for the second team. The first team put, uh, won Champions League that year. So the guy, the <laughs> officer I was dealing with was like a big fan. No way. And he was like, I mean, he had no idea that I didn't play for the first team. Like sure. I was playing for the second team. And he was just like, oh, wow, like, you know, congratulations, but, you know, this is really bad. Like, you can't do this again. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I'll never do it again. And he just, like, let me, just let me leave without Whoa. any repercussions. <laughs> yeah, I got lucky. That was so bad. I can't believe I did that still. Wow. But you were just going to pick up your stuff. Yeah, it was harmless, really. You broke the rules by stay overstaying. Yes. That was the issue. Yeah. And then you were just going to pick up your stuff. I think you're, you're fine. Right? Morally, in my book, you're yeah. fine. Okay. Appreciate so, that. Okay, but this is just on your path to where? So you get to port. Yeah. So then, crazy me, I still actually wanted to go back to that team. Right. But it, the visa situation was so difficult. Like, yeah, you, like you said, I went to the embassy like three times and they were just like, no. Yeah. I'm like, and it was always something like, oh, can you speak German? I'm like, no. no. And then I would like learn a little bit of German and they're like, oh, what about this? I'm like, no. No. So then I tried my luck again in Boston with the first team. Okay. And back to Boston. Yep. Back to Boston. Good old Boston and actually made the team. So that was cool. exciting. Temporarily. Because uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. then like halfway through the season, I got cut. So that was kind of depressing. You were like, it's all working out. Yeah. I was like, finally, like, you know, dream come true. And I don't have to have a passport. Yeah, I was like, this is easy. <laughs> um, but, you know, too good to be true. Oh, my God. So I got cut middle of the season, which was sad. Yeah. Um, but also, honestly, the best thing that's ever happened to me. I don't know if you have any moments like that in your musical career where, like, failure kind of... I have said many times that I am the most successful musician who's never won a gig. Oh, okay. Because I've auditioned many, many times for different things. I've gotten to the last like cut, and then I don't get it. And it always has like taken me to a cool place. Right. Like, yeah. okay, well, now I have all this free time. I'm going to do something different, and mm -hmm. that's always been better. And I, now I kind of know it, but I'm like... Ugh. In the moment? Oh, it's like... That would be really nice. Someone would pay me to play trombone. Right? And instead I have to do it all for myself. Yeah. But yeah, every single time I'm like, well, this will be better in the long run. Yeah. No, I, I truly believe that yeah. everything happens for a reason. Hello! Hello! Because, <laughs> yeah, in the moment, it was like the worst moment of my life. Yeah. But then it like actually brought me back to Europe. This time I had an agent... So I got my visa sorted. They oh, okay. did everything for me. You didn't have to speak German. I didn't have to speak German. <laughs> Thank goodness I didn't have to speak Czech because that language is even harder than German. So you got an agent through playing for the first team? Is that? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. And I had the best time in Prague. I don't Whoa. know if you've ever been. I haven't. I would recommend because it is like beautiful. How long were you there? I was there for two years. And then my bags were packed to go back to Sparta for another season and then 
my agent called me one day. He was like, Kylie, you're never going to believe this. Like, Atletico Madrid want you. And I was like, you're right. Like, I, I don't believe <laughs> don't you. Believe, yeah. Because in the Czech Republic, like, it was so much fun. But, like, I, I don't, I'm trying to think of, like, a comparison between the two. Like, Spain's, like, here. Yeah. And, like, on an international level in the Czech Republic, like, isn't that rated of a league. Sure. So it's like, he was like, yeah, like, this doesn't Like, why would they even happen. be watching? Why would they take a chance on me? So I got really, really lucky. That's awesome. Honestly. So, yeah, and, like, Spain was amazing. And so from that point on, you were on a national scale. Yeah, like, that was, like, res like a very respected league. Like, that was something, honestly, I don't think I could even dream I never dreamt of that you know mm -hmm. I was kind of like play have some fun but then yeah. that was like you know the big leagues yeah so, so during the COVID year the American League didn't wasn't happening mm -hmm. but in Spain the league continued so a lot of the American players mm -hmm. came over to Spain so one of the pride players came over to Spain played for our team and obviously like you know the coaches like to keep tabs on yeah. players and stuff so he was watching one of our games and was like who is this American girl, yeah. you know, like you don't have to deal with visas or anything. Right. So it was just kind of like a seamless transition. So worked out well. Wow. It's good to be back. Yeah. Home in America. Yeah. Do you prefer it? It's different. Yeah. Like I miss traveling and stuff. I love traveling and over in Europe, it's very easy. Right. But it's, it's nice to be home. I don't know how much longer I have. So like to play in front of my parents and stuff mm -hmm. is and my friends and I don't know you miss a lot yeah. like overseas yeah and definitely. just in general even in America I still miss a lot but you know I miss like weddings and sure. you know all that yeah. stuff so this makes it a little easier yeah although I will say there are some things that like I don't necessarily want to go to and when I'm traveling <laughs> it's like oh like That's you understand yeah. like I, yeah, yeah. I'd love to go yeah but, yeah but unfortunately you, you kind of get both yeah but no, it's, it's really nice being so close. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do today, I haven't explained this to you yet. Okay. I have a few ideas, but I'm going to write a song. Okay. Okay. You are not a musician. I'm not gonna ask you to do anything. Yeah, please don't. Musically. Nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> are you a good whistler? No, okay. I, can't, I literally can't do anything. I'm so, I can like clap. I don't think I can even snap my fingers. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, uh, clap for me. Like yeah. to a B no, or like just, once. just clap? There you go. Okay. Okay. That'll go in. So one idea that I'm kind of interested in is picking one day in your life. Okay. That's like the most pivotal day or oh. something like that. And like really describing that day. Before we get there, when and where do you feel most like yourself? Oh. Yeah. That's a really good question. Um, there is this story when, when I was at girl scout camp okay and i was miserable yeah <laughs> like miserable i like wrote a letter to my mom because we didn't even have phones then I wrote yeah. a letter to my mom and like can you please come pick me up of course. like please come save me yeah been there and like the only time i was happy or like not crying was mm -hmm. like when i just was running around on the soccer field there at girl scout camp i don't know i just that's just always been like my happy place yeah it has its ups and downs but like at the end of the day that's just always gonna make me happy just running around yeah just run around with the ball <laughs> at my feet and do you yeah. get into like a uh like for me when i perform it's like tunnel vision mm. like it's almost like nothing else exists but yeah it, it almost like it literally feels like everything else is dark yeah and like i don't even see anything yeah, i don't yeah, see the yeah. audience i don't see anything i don't hear them yeah and it's like this In the pinpointed zone. focus mm -hmm. Yeah, do you get that? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Especially in like the big, big games. Yeah. You, you just like go into a different zone. Like some people like remember every little moment and sure. stuff. But for me, I'm like, I don't even remember. No. I was just like so locked in. Yeah, it's one experience. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Did you think of a day when I gave you that option? It's... Um, it's hard because I feel like the, the pivotal day was like the really sad day of like me getting cut. You know? Do you not want a song about it? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it's depressing or not. Like, I don't know if that's like what people want to listen to. So the thing about these songs is it will be absolutely about this as an inspiration point, as yeah. a jumping off point. But then like the second half of the project is just making it a good song. Yeah. And I like, don't worry. Yeah. Cause honestly Important. that was 
probably the most important. Yeah. Okay. Let's yeah. let's dive in then. Okay. Yeah. What year was it? It's a long time ago. It this was been in Boston. Yeah, this was in Boston. It would have been 2016. Okay. This is after you've been deported. This is after okay. I've been deported. Okay. Yeah. Do you care that everyone knows you've been deported? No. <laughs> okay. I mean, I hope like the Germans don't come after me or something. Yeah, they're going to go after that guy that give you a break. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Sorry, that's like snitching. <laughs> so, so, you're back in Boston, you catch a break. And when does the season start? Yeah, so we start in January. Okay, so. you do all training, start in January. Yeah. And then when, when does, it, is it going well? Do you feel like it's going well? And so that's the thing, it was, I mean, I was so excited to like have a contract. You yeah, know, like that this was is your my first, first big break. Yeah, yeah, my first professional contract. So, I mean, it's, it was super exciting, of course, but it's also like a grind. Like it was like, a, I would, had to compete every day and like really right. like bring, bring my best every single day and it was tough like they were a good team and it was like I was definitely I wasn't like soaring mm -hmm. like I had a lot to learn and I was really aware of that um but yeah I didn't expect to get cut yeah because you know you have a contract for the whole year right but in the NWSL the American League like unfortunately if you're not performing or whatever reason they can just cut you whenever wow yeah it's pretty that's pretty brutal. Aggressive, yeah. <laughs> yeah, very much so. So So when does that happen? So yeah, that would have happened like middle of the season, June. We were in Houston for a trip, um, for a game, and we flew back. You know, we were all on the same bus and everything. And then um, I literally left, went and got some dinner with some friends, and then I get a call from my coach, which is odd. Yeah. You know, I'm like, it was very odd. And it was literally like, a three-minute conversation. You're like, this is either really good or really bad. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, it was just really short. Just said, like, hey, Kylie, we're going to have to let you go. Like, they wanted another player. Yeah. And, like, our, our roster was at its limit. Uh -huh. yeah. So they were like, yeah, like, this is obviously a tough decision. But, yeah. you know, this is the sport. Thanks for your service. Oh, <laughs> my God. Yeah, and then it was like actually like out of a movie. Like the next day, I like went in to like get all my stuff, and like my locker was all cleared out. All my stuff was in like a brown box. No, I swear it's like out of a movie. Where were you when you got the call? I was I was in my car. Like I had literally you had just like finished just dinner. finished dinner, and I was in my car, and I was like, I, like you don't even know what to do. No, you know, because your life is just like yeah. you have a, a little bit of a plan. Yeah, and then I was like, you know, I lived with a host family. That's what we did, and they were super nice. They're like, you can stay with us. Like, it's not like they like kicked me to the ground. Yeah, they're like, well, if you're not <laughs> yeah. playing in Boston, but imagine like they brought in the new players. Yeah. Been, like, <laughs> so it could have been worse, yeah. I guess. Sure. Um, but yeah, I was just really like, well, now what? Do we, you know, yeah. like you question a lot. Sure. Um, but yeah, luckily I had an agent, and so what was the conversation with your agent like? I was like. Just get me to any team. Yeah, get I me will on the field. play anywhere. Like I've like known players who've played in like Serbia and like Kazakhstan. Yeah, and like I was honestly like ready to kind of do that. Sure, but I got lucky that it was in Prague, which was like mm -hmm. a a good team and a decent league, like and a nice place to live. Yeah, so I was ready. I was like, please, whatever you got for me, yeah. like I'm there. And how fast was the turnaround there? Um, it wasn't long. It was it was good timing actually. Like I got cut in June and that's kind of when the European season starts. Oh wow. Yeah, so it was only like a couple weeks. I went to my aunt's lake house to just kind of like yeah. decompress. So what's that look like? I, I want a picture painted of this, you sitting there and like kind of sulking and kind of like making a game plan for your life yeah so it's it's hard because a lot of it is in like the agent's hands you know right. like you you're trying to like you know prepare your resume your cv mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it with all your accomplishments right. you're trying to get film together and all of that mm -hmm. you give that to your agent and you just kind of have to like you're just waiting oh, yeah you're yeah. just like this is what i got like and it's just yeah this weird limbo period because wow. You're not making any money. Like, yeah. you're just kind of in a, a really weird place. You're trying to, like, relax and trust the process and stuff. But right. there are those, like, doubts in your mind. Of course. Like, 
what if it doesn't work out? Mm -hmm. Like, then what am I going to do? Yeah. Most people, it doesn't work out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so. Like, and like the odds of the, you know, especially when you just get cut, like you're not like, oh yeah, luck's going my way. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. You're just. Everyone's going to want me to play for their team. Yeah, I just right, got cut. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm free. Like, can you like keep that on the DL? Yeah. yeah. Like people right. aren't going to ask questions. Like, why is this girl, yeah. the league was going on. They're like, why yeah, is this like, girl Yeah, like when you get fired from a job, like. <laughs> I'm not going to put that one on my yeah, resume. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But that's all I really had to put on there. Right. So I was like, hmm. Yeah. But it ended up working out really well. So. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And then that trajectory. It's crazy. So have you ever seen the movie The Butterfly Effect? Or like, you know, the With theory? Ashton Kutcher? Yeah. <laughs> it's, like my, so. it's like my favorite movie ever. I got cut in June. The team, Boston, folds. <gasps> What? At the end of the year. It doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. What? Yeah. How crazy is that? So if you stayed on the team, you would have been in the same spot. Yeah. Better resume. True. <laughs> true, true, true. I wouldn't have to say cut. I would have just said folded. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. That's isn't, wild. Isn't that weird? Yeah. So like, it, it couldn't have worked out mm -hmm. better, really. And now all of those players are looking for new jobs at the same time yeah. when you... Yeah six months was, before yeah over in Prague already had like half a season yeah. was like and they're like chilling. oh could we come play with you yeah wow isn't that weird that's crazy yeah. who knows what would have happened at that point you know maybe you know I would have been in the same situation just sure. you know delayed six months you never know You're right but at the same time I think I did learn a lot about myself like I think like that feeling and that failure mm -hmm. like when I went over to Prague, like, I just, like, fell in love with the game again, as corny as it sounds. Sure. Because, like, in Boston, I, it was a struggle every day, and I yeah. was, like, nervous and not confident, like, didn't mm -hmm. feel like myself. And then when I went over to Prague, I was like, nobody knows who I am. Nobody knows that I got cut. Sure. I'm not going to tell anybody. So much less so, pressure. Yeah, so I'm just going to, like, go out there and just, like, have fun. And it was, like, honestly the best thing that ever could have happened. I know it's, like, probably not nice to talk about it like this but like was it easier to play in Prague like oh. the, was the caliber lower so yeah. you could like kind of hang exactly hmm. exactly like I don't know if I was ready for like the NWSL like that was like the yeah. high one of the highest levels sure. and I don't know if I was ready for that like it was like a big jump for mm -hmm. me so I think the trajectory that I took was kind of perfect like went to Prague and then was able to kind of like build my confidence and like get better obviously yeah. like get experience and then went to Atletico and yeah now here so it kind of you know took a nice little upward yeah a little bunny hop and yeah, then up. yeah yeah exactly wow pretty crazy wow I'm trying to think of like the arc of this story and it's clearly like the success story with like it's the hero's arc here's the bad guy we're gonna defeat him hey we're gonna defeat him and then like something happens yeah and then it goes back it's yeah. the hero's arc it's per it's the perfect story you've, yeah. you've crafted okay but, i mean but we need the resolution are you super happy what are your ambitions now i'm so so happy here in orlando like, do you have to say that i mean <laughs> technically probably yes but i mean it do you trust me <laughs> yeah sure um, i love uh dennis wick mouthpieces and bac trombones <laughs> Of course. I really do. Same page, <laughs> same page. But yeah, I, I love it. I love playing. Like I've honestly probably the greatest thing. I mean, you probably understand too, like to do what you love every day. Yeah. Like it's, we're like the luckiest people ever. Yeah, and it's it's hard to remember that sometimes when it's like a yeah, grind. And you're it like, is. I could be doing literally anything else. Yeah, no, I know. And like, I'm sure you can relate to this as well. Like the people I've met along the way, like I have friends literally all over the world. Yeah. Like, and it's like, those are something like, that's invaluable for sure. Yeah, that's this whole tour for me. Yeah. It's just like all these people I've met over the years and we do the, oh, we should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I'm like, no, I'm actually no gonna do it. <laughs> I'm taking you up on Yeah. I mean, it's not like a, a long, it's just an afternoon or something, but like, I'm coming out. Yeah. If you want to see me, we're going to yeah. see each other. No, I love that. Um, and it's been amazing so far. What do you do when, on your off days? You know, people ask me what do I do with my day. I don't know. Because, like, I don't do a lot. I feel the same. I don't really to have be anything honest. to show for it, but, like. <laughs> I feel exactly the same. Yeah. But I have a great time. Like, I'm never bored. <laughs> I don't know what I do, you know? 
I love ice cream. I usually go get ice cream on my off days. That's kind of like my treat. I, that's a, that's an impossible question. Oh, is it? Yeah, anything but mint chocolate chip. Do you like mint chocolate chip? Um, I'll have it. Oh. I don't. I, I like don't you think... would like go to an ice cream place and like order mint chocolate chip. I'm. Uh... This is how I base my friendship. Yeah, no, I'm. I I prefer the fruit stuff. Okay. Like a that's... sorbet and okay. that kind of stuff. Chocolate. If it's paired with a caramel, I'm totally into. Yeah. Um, Can't go wrong. But. Yeah, for the most part, I'm going for like a refreshing thing, which yeah. is usually fruit um, and the like really thick kind of like peanut butters and chocolates. Like yep. they're great, but I don't feel it's refreshed. Lot. Yeah, that's a lot. And so a mint chocolate chip, like it's fine, but like chocolate chip cookie dough or something yeah. would be. Those are the classic. Like you can never go wrong with the classics, cookies and cream, chocolate chip cookie yeah. dough those sort of things. If I'm ever sad, like I eat a lot of ice cream. <laughs> like when I got cut like ice cream, that just makes everything better. You actually are really into nutrition. So you probably know if that's um, like actually. Uh, so, okay, if you want advice, which you clearly you don't, uh, Nix uh, ice cream. Nix Is uh, nutritionally like decent. I mean, You'll so it's it not now. good. No, it is good. Yeah? Yeah, it's, it's delicious. Um, Are you paid by them? I'm not paid by Nix. <laughs> They're like a Swedish company, I think. Uh. It's in a lot of stores. Like I yeah? see it in like the grocery stores and stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's not healthy. No, of course. But, but like, like, yeah, it's. That's what I'm. The thinking. sugar content isn't so crazy, and it's. Okay. Uh, it's got some some decent stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah, I am into nutrition, but being on the road has been. Yeah, wait, what do you, like, you can't cook or anything. I have a stove. Oh. Yeah, in the back. Oh my gosh. I know, but it's an uh, induction stove, so it runs off of the batteries. Uh. And so, and those are all charged with solar panels. Cool. So, if I'm, like, plugged in at a campsite, I'm yeah. cooking all day. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I've been limiting that because I, I don't want to get stuck without, because yeah. I run all my work equipment off of yeah, that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, well. Do you have a fridge in there too? I do. Oh, then you're chilling. Okay. Yeah. But when I have electricity or I'm willing to use the batteries, I'll do like oatmeal and stir fries and all that. Yeah. That's that's you should, luxurious. You should though. make like a a travel cookbook or something. Yeah, a, a glamping cookbook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like just like keep a log of everything you eat. It, I don't know that that's my first thought when I say I have cold beans with bread <laughs> you should make a cookbook yeah i mean <laughs> i can't cook so maybe that says it all but i'm also seeing a lot of people and of course like the thing you do is go out to eat most yeah, of the time yeah um so thank you for allowing us to walk in circles yeah walk off your yeah beans and toast this, <laughs> beans and bread <laughs> this is really nice um nice change of pace but okay anything else you want to say I think we're good. No, I mean, thanks for, for having me. Yes. And I'm glad I got to learn a little bit more. Well, I don't know if I learned. Do you <laughs> I have learned anything? so much about you. Do you have anything? They I, already know. This feels lopsided. Okay. Um, you can ask me off camera. They don't get to know my personal story. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for stopping by. No, thank you. <laughs> this was so fun. This was fun. Okay, there we go. Boom. <laughs>